Hello everybody and welcome to my tutorial on hot wire cutting with Grasshopper and Kuka PRC. In this tutorial I'll be showing you a quick and easy way to set up hot wire cutting to do some high speed prototyping and model making using a robot and a hot wire as well as just the simple methods of measuring your models. One thing I'd like to point out before starting the tutorial is how I've set up my tool in Kuka PRC. Initially, I set up an XYZ four point to specify the tool center point as the middle of my hot wire. And once I had calibrated that, I did the ABC two point method with the TCP already set. Then I set the X axis to run through the cut line. So that's the vector that the wire will be cutting through. Y runs up the wire, so the Y axis axis in Grasshopper I imagine as the hot wire slicing through a material and the Z is perpendicular to the wire. So if you imagine that as uh, parallel with the arms that are holding your hot wire. Otherwise the tutorial won't make much sense. So let's jump straight into the Grasshopper. The script we'll be setting up today is pretty straightforward just a simple matter of importing an object, analyzing it for its edges, selecting those edges, creating some control points to which we can set the planes that we'll use to create a linear movement with the robot to set our cap plane through an imagined piece of styrofoam. It's a pretty short little script. A lot of people have been asking for a hot wire cutter so we'll jump straight into it with a brand new file document in Grasshopper new document. In Rhino all I've got is I've got the mesh for my tool. I don't generally recommend having such a high density mesh because on slower machines that will slow down the grasshopper playback quite considerably. Mine seems to run it okay and it doesn't really bother me. If it does slow down and I've also got a shape. So for the sake of this tutorial let's imagine you've been you've got a site model or maybe You've produced a building model in Revit or Archicad with a lovely flowing roof that's responding to something parametric or you like it just because it looks good and your lecture is really not that fast. And we want to do some quick prototyping models with a robot. So the first thing we need to do is we're going to pull in our imagined building model going to go under parameters geometry and grab a b-rep right click in the center set one b-rep as I already had my imagined styrofoam selected that automatically selects it we can now turn off that layer in Rhino to keep our viewport nice and clean now we want to analyze this surface that's a b-rep surface we go under surface analysis and rep edges. That's going to get our vertices for us. That's six-sided uh, six sided solid, so we've got 12 vertices. And we only want to select, for this example, we only want to cut the top, the wavy top. So we'll go under set, list, list item. I'm going to double click, create a number slider, 0 to 11, we know that we've got 12 sides, put that in index, click both of them, click hold down alt to make a copy, and we'll take our the middle one which is our interior edge curves as our list, and you see that's now selecting our lower left edge but we want the top. So we'll just go through our list. There's that side, and we will do the same for the other. We know it's not up to eight. And there we've got the other side selected. Great, so what we need to do is to get our wire to pass through the center of this, we need to create some center line points, how we set up our wire uh, with the Kuka robot and then we need it to pass through at the correct angle at each point. So to do that, we are going to divide these two curves 
a curve, division, divide curve. We'll put both our curves in. And for our number, we'll create a new number slider. This one will be one to 20. Division one, obviously not enough. We'll put it up a bit high just to get enough curves. Just so we have enough fidelity that our curve is gonna come through in our final product. Okay, now that we've got our control points, we want to draw a line between each of those control points. So at the moment, that is uh, got branching data. We're going to go through set tree. We're going to explode our tree. Nice simple tree with only two points. And we're going to create a line between those two. The curve primitive line. And we'll see what we've got. The lines are in reverse order. It's going up one way and then back down the other. That's okay. We just need to reverse one. So we'll right click on our B input of our line. We'll reverse. Now we've got our lines to analyze the angle of our cut. Okay, now that we've done that, we want to find the center point of each of those lines, which is easily done under the curve analysis tab we will grab the evaluate length put our curves into that and now the length we want to analyze 0 0.5 which is of course halfway I should create a series of points exactly halfway through now this is where we want our hot wire to pass through but we need to make sure that it's passing through not parallel with the Y. We want it to go on the angle as set. So we'll go vector, we'll go plane, construct a plane. We're going to use our middle points we've just generated as our origin point. And our tangent will be the Y axis direction of the plane to ensure that you can see now to ensure that our wire is going to move at the appropriate angles and if we think that that's not enough fidelity we can of course go back it's parametric and just increase it and then our wire will pass through more points meaning a smoother curve we could even go higher than 20 i reckon i actually just leave it at 20. that's looking good that's pretty straightforward. So now we've got the points, they're at the right angles. We'll start thinking about our robot simulation. So under our Kuka PRC plugin for Grasshopper, I'm going to go to the first tab, which is core, and grab our Kuka PRC core. Set up our robot. I have access to a Contec 250. 2500, that's the right one. You'll of course select whatever robot model you have access to. For our tool, we have the tool already on the tool level. We go to parameter, geometry, mesh. Right click in the center of that, set one mesh, select our tool model, and that's, that's brought that into Grasshopper don't need to see that because we want to see that on the end of the robot of course so back into our KUKA plugin we grab virtual tool we're going to be using custom tool for KUKA PRC our geometry we've already imported goes into our tool and We've already set up our tool on the KUKA itself. Using our method, we've got, I've got the values written down here for 30.376. Uh, point 
455. Of course, all these numbers are going to be suited to your robot when you calibrate it to your tool with your robot. Eight. We'll see. Ninety-three point three five five. That's our custom tool set up. Confirm that. All happy with that. Move them out of the way. Now for our movement, we're going to do a linear movement. So under our KUKA plugin, our first tab of core, we're going to grab a linear movement and take our planes and plot them straight into commands that's looking very good it's going to do a simulator so double click to create a new number slider zero less than 1.000 the more zeros the more fidelity you have with your simulation playthrough have a look at this That's going great. That's moving our pieces through. One thing I haven't done though is that's not where my robot is programmed to start. I have it set to start in a particular location. So just to make sure I know what it's going to do when I start it up, click on the Google PR settings on your core module in Grasshopper. Set up my pre programmed in start position. That's 45. So, to, again, these, no, these uh, inputs will be all specific to your setup or how you're running your code, of course. Minus 90, 18. Copy them across by clicking this button up the top. We're happy with this. Show robot frame, show toolpath, settings, apply. Right now we've got a bit more distance if we've got a high piece of styrofoam. Now moves in, comes through and cuts our styrofoam. Now one thing I don't like is you've got to imagine we've got a block of styrofoam that's a bit higher because of course we're cutting through the styrofoam to make our model our very fancy curved roof so what we're going to do is just that's actually not too bad that might actually but just to ensure we're not bumping into something we're going to just move one of the original planes to our planes we're going to create another list item so under set List item, grab that, and that will default to the first one. We're going to move it, so under transform, Euclidean move. We're going to move that in the X. We want to move it out this way, so under vector, vector. We will grab our unit X vector, plug that in, double click, zero to say 200. And we use that for our X vector. We'll move that forward. 200. Now what we want is we want instead of the robot going to this point first, we want it to come here and then move and continue on its path to cut through the styrofoam. Of course you could then move one out this way or say you've got you know, an odd shape, you can make sure it clears it and cuts it through. Now that we've got this geometry, we want to add that data on the top. So under set three, we're going to select the merge data. The first data we want to go in is our original spot, which we just created. Then we're going to add in our original cut line, and that replaces our linear movement commands. And that has broken our robot. It might be too far. If we move that back, there we go. 
yeah, it's just a bit too far for the reach of the robot. You can see that's creating a bit of a catastrophic error. We can simply, since it's all parametric, we can still have our foam referenced in Rhino. We can select that and we can simply move that forward. That gives our robot a bit more wiggle room, especially in our cell, if you've got a cell. You don't want it to be colliding with your safety cell. Give that a quick look. We've got a beautiful cut line through the top on our curve. That will produce a lovely cut. Now, of course, you can then do the same method on all six sides. You just have to remember the way that you've set up your tool with the X, Y, and Z. So when you analyze your edges and create your cut paths, you just want to look at your simulation, make sure everything's set up accurate and they're lining up correctly, like I mentioned at the start of this video.